Raw material selection is so important that it is usually the uh, first or second thing that we discuss with a prospective new client, often before we even bring a project in-house. We have lots of raw materials in our process. We have three different media types, four different media supplements. We've got 10 or 12 small molecules, recombinant proteins, and these are highly critical raw materials that can vary in their quality and hence will impact the product we try to make. And in many cases, the reagents that we use as a researcher aren't suitable for use in clinical trials because of the nature of the way they're manufactured, the poor definition of the reagent, et cetera. So clearly, it's a great benefit if you can identify raw materials up front that are approved for clinical use. You don't want to be surprised once you're ready to move into the clinic that that material is available and what people are assuming you will be using and now you have to make a switch that might be detrimental in your own process. You want to have enough sense of how any given raw material affects your process and affects your product. If it's a base media, you can likely get by with just in vitro comparability assessments to show that your product hasn't changed. If it's a critical growth factor that affects the quality of the cells and potentially even the safety of the cells, you may be looking at repeating clinical studies at that point. Once you're in scaled manufacturing, you may have specific manufacturing processes and equipment that are tailored for a specific reagent formulation. That gets very expensive. So the earlier you can lock in your raw material supply chain, the better. If you know the reagents that you're working with aren't suitable for long-term commercialization and scale-up, keep your eye open for uh, the advent of new reagents that are going to be better reagents. The sooner you get those into the process, the better. 